Welcome to Variant, we love comics more than I can't wait for season three of My Hero Academia. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. For those of you who have been watching Variant Live every Monday right here on the channel, plug plug, you know I started watching My Hero Academia back in November of last year. I actually started watching it along with you guys, two episodes every week. Then I would talk about the two episodes with you guys on the following Variant Live until we finished the first season, which was a ton of fun. But recently, I just been watched the entire second season, meaning I'm all caught up and now waiting for season three with the rest of you. And can I just say, this anime is phenomenal. It's easily become one of my favorites. And because of that, of course, I wanted to do an episode on it. In the future, I'll probably do a history of My Hero Academia or a history of All Might or Deku. But for today, I thought it'd be cool to talk about one of, if not the strongest power in the My Hero Academia universe, one for all. It's possessed by the anime's number one hero and symbol of peace, All Might, who later passes it on to the main character of the anime and manga, Izuko Midoriya, AKA Deku. Now, before I give you the origin of one for all, there's probably a bunch of you who haven't seen the anime or read the manga that might be saying, what the heck is one for all in the first place? In a nutshell, it's a quirk. Quirks are what superpowers are called in this universe. So again, it's a quirk that allows its user to access stockpiled power. The result is granting its user momentary superhuman strength at incredibly destructive levels. It also gives the user increased agility and super speed. With that said, it hasn't been shown if the quirk that stockpiles power simply gains more energy as it's passed on, making one for all more powerful with each user, or if it's able to imprint other quirk abilities as it's passed on from user to user, which would also make it more powerful as it's passed on. But since it's a quirk made to stockpile power, clearly something is gained over time. Basically what I'm saying is one for all makes the user incredibly powerful, which if you watch the show or read the manga is a given since All Might is essentially the Superman of his universe. They even call him the symbol of peace and Superman is known as the beacon of light or hope. Coincidence? I think not. Anyway, that's what one for all is. Now let's talk about how it came to be. In the anime, One For All is explained by All Might when talking to Deku. He tells him it's the union of two different quirks. You see, what had happened was, way back in the day, there was a guy with a quirk called All For One. He also went by the villain name All For One, which is obviously One For All backwards. The power All For One allowed him to steal other quirks, but also distribute them to other people. All For One also had a younger brother, who was thought to have no quirk. His brother also didn't agree with All For One's villainous ways. And then one day, All For One forcibly gave his brother a quirk that allowed him to stockpile power. But unbeknownst to either of them, his younger brother did indeed have a quirk, which was the ability to transfer quirks to other people. So the stockpiling quirk merged with the younger brother's power and boom, One For All was created. Now by now the name One For All should make sense because it's inherited by others. It's essentially a passing of the torch of power. But how is it passed on? Is it simply just given with a thought or a handshake? No, it's actually a little cooler than that. The way One For All is transferred or inherited by a new user is by ingesting the current One For All user's DNA. For instance, Izuko Midoriya had to eat a strand of All Might's hair, which allowed him to inherit the power. With that said, a person can't simply eat the One For All user's hair or drink their blood and steal One For All. The current user has to willingly give the power away. Something else to know about One For All is that it seems to change the appearance of each user in different ways. For instance, it makes All Might turn into a massive muscular stereotypical looking hero, pretty much making him look like a completely different person as he's normally a skinny frail looking man with an extremely angular face. As for Deku, the ninth and most current user of One For All, it makes parts of his body glow an orange red yellow type color with vein like lines overlapping each other. It actually looks pretty cool. It also gives him a green lightning type effect aura around his body as the series progresses. And the last thing I'm gonna mention is some of the techniques that are used with the One For All power. For instance, All Might has Texas Smash, Delaware Smash, Carolina Smash, and so on. Basically, all of his moves are a state name with Smash at the end of it. And obviously, each move is a different variation of another. I know it sounds kind of weird that his fight moves are just called Texas Smash, Delaware Smash, and so on, but they actually sound really cool when All Might yells the move's name out before he uses them. As for Deku, same thing. He has Delaware Smash, Detroit Smash, and so on. Although he does have a move called One For All Full Cowl, which uses five to 8% of his power. With that said, that's my summary of the power One For All. And I think I said One For All a whole bunch in this episode. So don't do that drinking game where every time I say a certain word, you take a shot because I'm pretty sure you would be hammered by now. But if you guys haven't watched My Hero Academia yet, I highly recommend that you do so. I do not think you guys will regret it. The first two seasons are up on Verve. That's how I got all caught up. So I'll put the link for them in the description below. 
First up for Wednesday, January 17th, we have Star Wars issue 42. Plain and simple, this series is a must read for any Star Wars fan. Here we have Damaged issue 1. This is a brand new series and character, and it's about a man named Ethan Avery who wants to serve his country but ends up being changed into a monster. And finally, we have Batman issue 39. In this issue, we get Batman and Wonder Woman in the same story. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, as well as a shirt change, but hey, at least it's still a Flash shirt. Also, be sure to go to VariantComics.com to keep up with the show and all things comic related. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.